You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. The IT world used to be simpler. You only had to secure and manage environments that you controlled. Then came new technologies and new ways to work. Now, employees, apps, and networks are everywhere. This means poor visibility, security gaps, and added risk. That's why Cloudflare created the first-ever connectivity cloud. Visit cloudflare.com to protect your business everywhere you do business. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down the threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems, and protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. I'm keeping my eye on... In particular, what's trending uh, through Google searches. And um, I noticed uh, I actually had not heard of the Arc browser before, although I know it's been available for the Mac for uh, almost a year, I think. So this is kind of how I, uh, I came across it. And I thought it was interesting to see that threat actors were you know, hijacking that brand uh, pretty quickly. That's Jerome Segura, Senior Director of Threat Intelligence at Malwarebytes. The research we're discussing today is titled Threat Actors Ride the Hype for Newly Released Arc Browser. Well, I mean, let's walk through it here together. I mean, suppose I'm uh, a Windows user and um, I decide that the Arc Browser is something that I want to check out. Uh, and I go online to search for it, what might happen? So, yeah, most people are going to look, uh, do a search probably in Google, being the most popular search engine. Uh, so you go to Google, you search for our browser, and, um, you know, depending on your location and other factors, you may or may not see uh, one or multiple ads. But, uh, you know, in this case, I was able to uh, to reproduce this attack time and time again, so I think it was pretty uh, pretty widespread. Um, so, as a user, what you, you'll see is uh, the search results at the top. You'll see something called sponsored, uh, which means it's uh, it's an ad. Um, it's a result that was paid for by an advertiser, um, and that us- those usually appear before the organic search results. Um, by organic, we mean um, those websites that have been crawled and indexed by Google. So, yeah, the the ad appears at the top, um, and the ad could be uh, from any advertiser out there. Um, it could, you know, m- most of the time we see. Um, actually, it's funny because a lot of the time when you know users who will do a search for a browser, uh, they'll see a competitor. Uh, uh, in, in an ad. So if you go to Bing, for example, you search for Chrome, you're going to see an ad for, for Edge. And if you go to um, to Google, you search for an, a browser other than Chrome, you're going to, you might see an, an ad for Chrome. Um, but um, what, you know, in this case, so you look for the Arc browser and the, the ad that was shown, and there are several variations of that ad, uh, looked entirely legitimate. Um, by By that, I mean... You're looking at a couple of indicators. One is uh, the logo. Um, so the logo in the ad actually matches the, the brand for Arc. And then you look, perhaps the more important one, you look at the, the URL that's shown on the ad, and it is arc.net, which happens to be the official website for Arc Browser. Wow. All right, so I see this ad, and I'm trying to be careful, so I'm checking for that URL, and that seems legit to me. And I think to myself, okay, well, this is it. I I click through. What happens next? So when you click on the ad, um, there, you know, most users don't, I mean, the majority of users will not see what happens behind the scenes, but 
what's happening is a series of redirects. So the, the click on the ad URL itself will send you to another uh, URL that will check for a few things. Most of the time, what we see is threat actors uh, like legitimate uh, advertisers will use uh, click tracking services. So these are marketing tools that, uh, you know, the goal is to, to collect analytics on, uh, on, on clicks, but also to make sure that uh, the clicks are from real people. So anything like a, a bot or a crawler uh, will be discarded. So the bad actors will use those, you know, generally to actually avoid crawlers like Google, which is kind of smart. But if you are a legitimate user, it proceeds with the, the chain of redirects. Uh, and eventually, what you see on your screen is uh, the homepage for, for ARC, uh, which is pretty much a replica of the official one. In this case, the domain name was different, though. So if you did pay attention to your URL in the browser, you will see a very small difference in the domain name. But it's subtle enough that um, you may actually not notice it. This is a, a, a type of attack that we, we call typo squatting. Uh, so you change a letter in, in the domain name, or maybe uh, if it contains an I, you use an L, something that looks similar. And so, yeah, you have that page um, and you have the a big download button. And uh, that's where most people are going to click on to install uh, what they think is the Arc browser, but it's actually not. Well, and in looking through your research here, I mean, the, these these typo squatted pages, I mean, they look like the real thing. They There's nothing that jumps out at me that, that there'd be anything amiss here. Exactly. Um, and, you know, I think it's um, attackers have been creative over over the years. Uh, I've seen attacks that were really clever, actually, where they use um, something we call international domain names. So think about uh, the the fonts that you can use, and certain fonts, like for different alphabets, uh, have special characters. And so an A from the you know Latin alphabet or English alphabet. Uh, is an A, but maybe in Cyrillic, an A with a little dot on it has a different meaning, but visually it will look the same. So they, mm. they, they can use certain things like that, uh, which again makes makes it very difficult to for for users to spot. And I think also, you know, one one uh, piece of advice that has been given over the years, over and over again, which I think we need to kind of debunk now, is that. Uh, if there's a padlock or it's if it's HTTPS, that means it's secure. Mm. Well, the site is secure, all right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the connection is secure, but right. you are on a malicious site. So it's it's malicious and secure at the same time. But right. it has nothing Every to do with the site being legitimate or not. Right. Everything between you and the bad guys is properly encrypted. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I go ahead and I click this download button. Uh, where does that leave me next? So it will download uh, an installer on your on, on your fo on your machine in a downloads folder. You know the the installer. Uh, people will run the installer. It has a nice little trick where it will actually retrieve the real installer from Arc Browser while also loading malicious code. So the victim actually uh, will get the impression that they are installing the proper uh, program, but uh, there is something more nefarious that's happening in the background. Um, mm. And you're not really, you know, you're not really seeing any, any anything. It's uh, it's very well done. And it happens, you know, the, the payload will be downloaded from a remote website. And then I describe in, in the research, uh, you know, a bit more information about the payload and actually seen a few variations as well. But uh, it's a payload that, you know, very similar to what, you know, we've seen for a long time, which is a, a a type of stealer. So something that will, you know, rob all your your credentials, anything that's uh, on your machine, like cookies from your browsers and things like that. How stealthy are they trying to be here? You know, when they're when they're loading the legit browser, but then also their own info stealer behind the scenes, or are they are they being intentional about trying to avoid things like antivirus? 
Yeah, they usually are. Um, and I think the way that, um, you know, that, that, that installer itself, uh, what we've seen time and time again is they, they, they use digital signatures. So they sign the file with a legitimate uh, or rather a valid signature from one of the certification authorities, which means that um, the file will be trusted by the operating system. It doesn't mean that the file is clean. It's just because it has a certificate, it is trusted. And unfortunately, it's not that hard uh, for malicious actors to sign uh, their their malware binaries with you know certificates. Um, they can do that um, either by stealing um, you know the uh, the account of a legitimate developer or simply creating a new account with a fake identity and then you know uh, signing those files. So you know the chances of the file being undetected are pretty high, especially when the, the attack has just happened, you know, in the next few hours. And then what we see typically is uh, at some point, um, security products will start, you know, picking up the detection. But by then, you know, probably hundreds of people have already been infected. We'll be right back. And now, a word from our sponsor, Zscaler, the leader in cloud security. Cyber attackers are using AI in creative ways to compromise users and breach organizations. In a security landscape where you must fight AI with AI, the best AI protection comes from having the best data. Zscaler has extended its zero-trust architecture with powerful AI engines that are trained and tuned by 500 trillion daily signals. Learn more about Zscaler Zero Trust plus AI to prevent ransomware and AI attacks. Experience your world secured. Visit zscaler.com slash zero trust AI. Help me understand an element of this here. Going back to the initial ad that runs on Google, the fact that that ad has the actual URL for the legitimate ARC web browser, is that just a matter that the the bad guys can put in whatever they want into that particular field? Yes, that's, that's actually, for me, it's one of the most interesting things and perhaps one, one area that uh, where Google could do better. Uh, and I've researched it a little bit, you know, how is this possible? Uh, researched it to the point where, you know, I try to reproduce it myself. Uh, essentially, you um, you create a, an account with, you know, your AdSense, uh, Google AdSense, and then there's a couple of fields that you have to fill in. One of them is what they call the display URL. So the display URL is um, what you see on the ad. And that display URL can be anything. But there is a condition where if you're going to use a display URL, so for example, here, arc.net, what Google calls the final URL, which is what happens after you click on the ad, they must match, they must have the same domain. Otherwise, Google will not allow you to do that. So hmm. based on that, you're like, okay, um, how, if I want to impersonate a brand, I have to use the same final URL as the one that's displayed to users. So how can I uh, sort of, you know, uh, reroute traffic in a way that, you know, Google will not see? Right. And there is yet another uh, feature part of Google Ads, which is called uh, a tracking template. And this is what I was mentioning earlier. It's essentially uh, marketing analytics. So you are allowed to use tracking templates where right after somebody clicks on the ad, uh, they will be redirected to that service. And there are there's dozens and dozens of companies that provide this kind of service. Um, you know, and, and the majority of these companies are legitimate. They just, uh, you know, they provide you click data, where your users are from, you know, uh, they 
they're, they're able to detect bot traffic, VPNs, things like that. So it's, it's a legit service. But there is a feature in that service that allows you to then uh, choose where you're sending users next. So, and that's where the malicious action happens is threat actors essentially will point the analytics URL to another domain, that domain they control. And usually they're smart enough not to make that domain malicious yet. It's just a sort of intermediary, uh, but they control that domain. Uh, both Google and uh, the tracking uh, analytics service, uh, actually Google has already lost visibility. The tracking service only sees that, that next domain. And then what happens is the attacker from that domain can then place another redirect, which this time, this time will be to their malicious web page. So I know it's hard to, to describe it with words, but essentially to, to kind of summarize it, when you click on, uh, on the ad, you will never reach your final destination. You will never mm -hmm. reach the legitimate website thanks to a tracking template that is able to reroute tra traffic. And, uh, and Google actually supports this as a full feature and it's being abused extensively. And I think that's, that's a huge problem. And for me, the, the biggest problem, I guess, is uh, because of this feature, anybody, uh, including myself, you, can create an ad uh, for a brand, a popular brand, and get away with it, even though you don't actually own the brand. Um, and that's just, um, you know, for, for users, that's just uh, really, really misleading. You know, if, if the ad was for same ARC browser ad, but had a completely different URL that was not the legitimate website, I would say, okay, you know, Google let an ad uh, slip through that was malicious, but at least, you know, the URL the users see is, is not the official one. But in, in all these cases, it is the official URL. So really, there is no, uh, there is no chance for, for users to, to not fall for it. Wow. It's really frustrating, isn't it? I mean, I, it makes me wonder how much of this kind of falls on Google's responsibility here to, to do a better job. And I, I know, you know... It, a company of their size will say, well, this is hard to handle at scale. And I get that, but then maybe you shouldn't do this at scale, right? Well, yeah, I think, you know, I've, I've reported uh, hundreds of malicious ads over the past few years. Um, mm. And I, I guess the thing that I'm always surprised is how, and it's not just me, I think it's really anybody could, um, if you know what you're, you know, you're looking for, uh, you could just go out there, do a search, and have a very high chance of finding a malicious ad. In fact, somebody earlier was messaging me about uh, an application, uh, thinking, I think there's, um, they were seeing, you know, uh, some of their customers that had downloaded a, a malicious installer for that application, and they believed that it was from an ad. But they, and I, you know, I, I looked at the name of the application, which actually was a new one for me. I went on Google. I did a search, the first search at the first try, top result, sponsored malicious ad. So mm. that to me, you know, if it's that easy to find and Google is not, you know, uh, identifying those, we have a problem. Yeah. Right? For sure. Yeah. Well, what are your recommendations here? I mean, it, let's suppose I, I'm somebody who's, you know, leading an organization when it comes to security how do I put the word out to the folks in my organization to best protect themselves against this sort of thing? Well, there's different uh, mitigation strategies you can do. Uh, I think one of them is looking at the behavior for your users. Do you really want your users to be Googling software to download on their you know, work machines? Probably not. Um, you know, not just because of potential malicious ads, but also... There's other dangers. There's a lot of uh, sites that rank high in uh, search results page uh, using things like SEO poisoning attacks. Uh, and there's a bunch of, you know, affiliates and other, there's just so many potential uh, dangerous, uh, you know, avenues to, to, to go through that way. So my recommendation is that um, you provide your users 
a safe repository of the apps that they will need. So things like Zoom, WebEx, uh, Notepad, you know, all of that kept up to date in a repo so that users don't have to go and search for them. Um, so that's number one. And number two is, you know, look at your 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 risk uh, surface. Uh, I guess you, 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 the level of risk with malicious uh, ads, you know, in, in general, not just related to uh, software downloads. Is there a way that you can mitigate those? So, you know, for home users, typically we think of, um, we have ad blockers, things like, you know, browser extensions that we can use. In the enterprise world, it's a little bit different. Um, I don't think the adoption of ad blockers is, is just is the same. And it may not be the ideal solution either because you're trusting, you know, an extension that could be compromised. So, you know, if you're, if you're running a large network of, you know, endpoints, you may not want to install just any, any extension. So there right. are other solutions that you can do. For example, use uh, DNS filtering. That also has the benefit of not having to install anything in the browsers or on each endpoint. Um, and I think that's a pretty powerful uh, solution if you, uh, because most companies already have some kind of DNS filtering. Uh, if you add uh, domains that are serving ads, you know, whether it's Google or Bing or, you know, what have you, uh, you can really cut on a number of attacks uh, doing that, uh, that blocking just through network traffic. Our thanks to Jerome Segura, Senior Director of Threat Intelligence at Malwarebytes, for joining us. The research is titled, Threat Actors Ride the Hype for Newly Released Arc Browser. We'll have a link in the show notes. Our lengthy security reviews pulling attention away from your security program... With the largest network of trust centers, Vanta can help you streamline security reviews to win customer trust, save time, and close deals fast. Proactively demonstrate security by showcasing key resources like your SOC 2 or ISO 27001 and provide real-time evidence for passing controls. And when a security questionnaire is required, Vanta takes the first pass for you. Visit vanta.com cyber to take a self-serve tour. That's vanta.com slash cyber. And that's Research Saturday brought to you by N2K Cyberwire. Our thanks to Jerome Segura from Malwarebytes for joining us. The research is titled Threat Actors Ride the Hype for Newly Released Arc Browser. We'll have a link in the show notes. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. Your feedback ensures we deliver the insights that keep you a step ahead in the rapidly changing world of cybersecurity. If you like the show, please share a rating and review in your podcast app. Please also fill out the survey in the show notes or send an email to cyberwire at n2k.com. We're privileged that N2K Cyberwire is part of the daily routine of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector, from the Fortune 500 to many of the world's preeminent intelligence and law enforcement agencies. N2K makes it easy for companies to optimize your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your teams while making your teams smarter. Learn how at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. We're mixed by Elliot Peltzman and Trey Hester. Our executive producer is Jennifer Iben. Our executive editor is Brandon Karp. Simone Petrella is our president. Peter Kilpie is our publisher. And I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here next time. Hi, everybody. It's Maria Varmazas here, your host over at T-Minus Space Daily, and sometimes a guest on Hacking Humans, too. We here at N2K CyberWire work hard to bring you concise, intelligence-driven news and commentary 
and we'd like to know how we're doing. Please take a few minutes to complete our audience survey and share your feedback to help us continue to grow and meet your needs. Visit cyberwire.com slash survey. That's cyberwire.com slash survey to get started. Thanks so much for your input as we reach for the stars. It means the universe to us. Thank you.